Yeah, I'd like to introduce uh, Brian Fuller and Dwight Farwater from PYA. Um, as you read in the document that we sent you last week, uh, they are here in response to the House bill and uh, state statute regarding the, the assessment that Ms. Ramos mentioned during the education committee, so we don't need to ask why they are here or for what uh, specific purpose. So they have a uh, PowerPoint presentation in summary of the 50 plus page document that you all um, read last week. We'll leave it up to uh, Brian Dwight to do the presentation and then I'm sure they'll be willing to answer any questions you may, you may have. Okay. Thank you, George. Uh, and thank you to the board. Uh, we're thrilled to be here, honored to be here this afternoon. Uh, my name is Brian Fuller. I am a principal with QIA. QIA is a uh, national healthcare consulting and accounting firm. Uh, on the healthcare consulting, on the consulting side, we're all healthcare. Uh, on the accounting side, we, we are uh, more broad than that. Uh, I think I've got a little bit of background here on us. Uh, we are celebrating our, our 40th anniversary this year. We were founded in 1983. Uh, you can see we have received accolades from uh, those that are evaluating the performance of those in our industries, both accounting and, uh, and healthcare consulting uh, favorably, uh, as we did with you all as part of the report. Uh, our practice is national. Uh, we have an office here in Tampa, Florida. Uh, I'm from uh, Columbus, Ohio. My colleague, Dwight Tarwater, who is the manager and project manager on this engagement, is from Knoxville, Tennessee, where we're headquartered. Um, to underscore uh, the point that was made before, we made very sure when we uh, proposed to, to deliver or to work on this report with the organization that we qualified for the state's uh, definition of independence. So we are neither affiliated with, with Parish Medical Center, uh, nor do we have any financial interest in Parish Medical Center. Um, and we went back and forth with legal on that came to an agreement that based on who we are, what we are, where we worked before, that, that we didn't qualify for any of those things. Um, so the report itself, uh, we adhered to the letter of the request in the statute of, of what's being requested. The, the, what's in boxes one through nine here uh, is what you heard Ms. Ramos uh, speak to in her comments earlier. So we answered and the report is structured. If you've had the opportunity to go through it, uh, you'll see that our report is structured exactly like the, uh, the statute itself. And we attempted to stay within the, within the limits of the request uh, where we were unable to do so or where we felt that there was information that was germane to the explanation for the situation here within the district. Uh, we did so, but we called that out uh, to every extent we had. We evaluated Parish across uh, five domains and three peer groups. A couple of things that the uh, uh, the statute asked for was us to understand and, and opine upon uh, performance and goals and objectives within a uh, you know, set of documents, including the charter, that don't get very detailed about what the performance requirements are, what the goals and objectives are for the district. Uh, we opted to, to utilize a framework that we can see here, uh, uses five domains of quality, access, community benefit, cost, and financial performance. We measured the organization uh, against itself over time, as well as measured the organization uh, against a variety of peer groups. We used three peer groups to make sure that we were able to build what we think is a uh, best practice type of review. We've done these in many other places over the years. Uh, and we want to make sure that we're looking at those things that the industry looks at when it decides to opine upon the level of health, uh, efficiency, effectiveness, sustainability of a hospital or health system. So these uh, five domains, I don't think I have a slide. You can see the metrics that we use within each of these five domains. I don't think that I brought a slide on uh, the peer groups that we use, but the, the language in the uh, in the statute itself asks that we look at geographically contiguous peers. We did that as one of the group, as one of the groups. We also looked at those that as we looked across the region, uh, we looked for similarly similarly situated, excuse me, 
uh, organizations that bear resemblance to parish in terms of socioeconomics of the community we serve, size of the community, uh, size and scale of the organization, relative depth and breadth of services. Uh, we wanted to give a full picture of uh, how this organization is performing. It's very difficult and I think we all know that you can't just look into two hospitals and two neighboring communities and decide that they're peers. They're often very different. So we triangulated around, we did use geography, we did use uh, what we call the PYA peer group in the, in the document. Uh, that's those that we felt are similarly situated. And then we went outside to your group purchasing organization, Vivian. They had developed already a list of peer organizations to the district. Uh, we used that one as well. So as you go through the body of the report, uh, you're gonna see in most of our graphs, we've got comparisons of performance trended over time uh, for Parish as well as for uh, the average of all of those peer groups. With respect to then results, I'm not gonna read these to you, but as you look down this page that summarizes our takeaways from quality, access, and community benefit, you can see that uh, from our perspective and the evaluation and the, the data and analysis that we were able to perform, uh, largely uh, well-performing, well-managed, well-run organizations. There are going to be areas uh, within each of these domains where we know there are things uh, that we have to work on where performance may not be uh, up to par in terms of the peers that have been identified. Uh, in most, of, if not all of those cases, those were things that were raised by management when we came on site about two months ago uh, and did group interviews and conversations and started to collect information across the organization. Uh, leadership was very forthcoming in, in terms of what they thought we'd see when we looked at the data and there was sure enough, that is what we saw. Uh, as well as sharing their plans uh, for mitigating some of the challenges in some of the areas. You can see at the bottom of the last bullet under quality here, uh, the average time in the emergency department is still not where we want it to be, but that's something that uh, we understand has, uh, is, is a priority for the group uh, and for the organization, uh, and we've begun to put uh, steps in place to mitigate that challenge. Uh, moving on to cost and financial performance, as we heard uh, in, in, in Mike's uh, presentation uh, when we walked in during the finance committee, um, financial performance has been a challenge. We recognize that. Uh, there was a, um, you know, we did not have the ability to take the analysis past FY22 based on what's available from a comparative perspective. Uh, though we did address the reality that FY23 was a challenging year for the organization. We do believe, however, based on all we've learned uh, from the, the operating performance improvement plans that are in place. Uh, again, that those items, even where there are deficits in our performance to where we wanna be or where some in the community think maybe we should be, uh, those things have been identified, those things have been uh, planned for, and we are now executing on those plans to make improvements in those areas. Again, though, as you look across those five domains, uh, all of them we, we thought were as good as or superior to what we're seeing in similarly situated and or geographically contiguous uh, organizations um, with the financial performance and the challenges of, of, uh, of FY23 noted. We did make recommendations, uh, nothing that rose to the threshold of a statutory or budgetary recommendation for the, the district, uh, for the legislature to, to contemplate, uh, but much more strategic, I believe, in nature, uh, making sure that we are uh, you know, continuing to look to serve the community best and do so through partnership where, where able, uh, making sure we've got a really tight handle on our long-term financial projections uh, and understanding the run rate across, across the organization, um, things like that. Um, nothing though that we would say would, uh, you know, again, rise to the level of something that needed to be changed statutorily, something that needed to be changed from a budgetary perspective. Uh, you heard about a lot of what's going on on the efficiency front. I think a, an exciting thing that you all have done over the course of the last several years is put the health network in place. Uh, I think that network, as we're able to take that to market, 
uh, I think may meet with a lot of enthusiasm among purchasers in the market. I know that we hear from employers and individuals all the time about affordability increasingly being an issue. That network can help to uh, help to address those types of issues. Um, so we did, we, and again, I'm not saying here, I'm not here saying that these things one through four are things that we came up with. Many of these, if not all of them, are things that management already is working on regularly, um, had identified, continues to work on, uh, continues to evaluate, continues to reach out uh, to other providers in the community uh, to ensure, again, that we're providing the most effective and efficient care, and we're doing it in a fashion that's going to make uh, Parish Medical Center is sustainable for the long term. Questions? Do I have any questions? All right, compared to, uh, you, you've done this with other hospitals already? Yes, sir, we have. And compared to other hospitals, where do we stay? Yeah, it, it, it's never the exact same. Yeah evaluation and it's never the exact same organization or set of peers. I can say that given the disruption that we've experienced in the, in the world in the last three or four years, um, it is uh, somewhat surprising that, that Parrish has been as resilient. Uh, to me, it's a little bit surprising that Parrish has been as resilient as it has and has been able to, able to weather uh, a lot of the pandemic driven challenges that uh, you know we're still probably dealing with the after effects of. Um, there's, a, there, there's a lot of good going on here in a place that needs a lot of good to be going on. Uh, we're serving communities that need to be served. Uh, we're doing so aggressively. And it is, uh, it, it, it's heartening to see, and then I layer on top of that, uh, topics like building out the health network. And, and really demonstrating value to the market in terms of how much we've been able to save for our own employees and their health costs um, and save the organization. And then again, taking that to market, we're doing some pretty progressive things here um, that aren't going on in a lot of organizations nationally that for lack of a better image sort of limped into the pandemic and then limped back out of it. All right, good job. Did you want to communicate like or tell us what you came up with? We had nothing to do with the results, just the reporting of the results. We like them too. You have a lot to be, you have a lot to be proud of. Yeah, and we are. Anyone else have any questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.